Good afternoon, CM students. Okay, let us continue our lesson with your metabolic disorders. Okay, now in addition to diseases directly caused by damage to the kidney, metabolic diseases can also cause damage to the kidney indirectly through an abnormal buildup of metabolites. Abnormal buildup of metabolites in the blood and into the urine. Now, these disorders could be a result of genetic abnormalities or it may be due to systemic disease. Now, these abnormal metabolites from various metabolic disorders will usually appear in the blood or in the urine. Okay, now these disorders can be classified as renal disorders or they can be classified as overflow disorders. Okay, now let us differentiate the two, your renal disorders and your overflow metabolic disorders. Your renal disorders can result in an excess of abnormal metabolites abnormal metabolites when the reabsorption when the reabsorption or rather when reabsorption abnormalities occur as a result of renal tubular disease or the presence of renal toxins while on the other hand your overflow metabolic disorders okay uh, it can occur as a result of the disruption of the normal metabolic pathway. Disruption of the normal, <coughs> disruption of the normal metabolic pathway that causes now an increased plasma concentration of the non-metabolized substances. Now, the most frequently encountered abnormalities are associated with metabolic disturbances that produces urinary overflow of substances involving proteins, fats, or carbohydrate. Okay, so these uh, substances, it is the most frequently encountered. Frequently encountered substances involving these um, uh, metabolic uh, disorders. Okay. Now, the disruption of enzyme function can be caused by failure to inherit the gene to produce a particular enzyme. This is now referred to as your inborn error of metabolism. Or pwede naman, it could be a result by an organ malfunction from a disease or toxic reactions. Now, for this one, I want you to memorize the major metabolic disorders classify, uh, classified by functional defect. Okay, saan nyo makikita yan? Sa libro ni Strasinger. Okay, I think it is table 8.2. Nakalagay dun sa table yung mga uh, disorders under your renal disorders. Okay, and then disorders classified as overflow metabolic disorders. Now, unahin lang natin yung ating mga amino acid disorders. Okay, your amino acid disorder disorders includes your phenylketonuria, your tyrosinemia or tyrosinuria, okay, your alkaptonuria, what else? Your melanuria, your MSUD, organic acidemias, your indicanuria, and your cysteine disorders. Okay. So, let us start off with your phenylketonuria. Phenylketonuria. Sorry. Phenylketonuria. Now, phenylketonuria, it is, the, it is considered as the most well-known amino aciduria. Okay. It could actually result to mental retardation if left untreated. Now, as we all know, your phenylketonuria is characterized by a mousy odor of the urine. And the urinalysis may show an increased amount of keto acids, including phenylpyruvate. Now, phenylketonuria, this occurs when the normal conversion of phenylalanine, phenylalanine to tyrosine, is disrupted. Again, ulitin ko, your phenylketonuria, this occurs when the normal conversion of your phenylalanine to tyrosine is disrupted. 
Okay? Now, interruption of this pathway will also cause the children with uh, fair complexions even in dark skin families. Okay? So, ibig sabihin niyan, yung mga bata na merong phenylketonuria, they have the tendency to have a fair complexion kahit nang galing sila sa dark skin families. Now, this is because due to the decreased production of tyrosine. Tyrosine kasi, okay, it is a metabolite of melanin. Now, dahil na-disrupt na yung kanyang normal pathway, magkakaroon, uh, rather, sorry, uh, magkakaroon na rin ng decreased production of this metabolite, your melanin. Okay? Now, the cause, uh, the cause of phenylketonuria, the main cause of this one, it is due to the failure to inherit the gene, failure to inherit the gene to produce the enzyme phenylalanine hydroxylase. Okay? Failure to inherit the gene, uh, needed for the production of this enzyme. Okay? Itong enzyme na to, kailangan siya for the conversion of your phenylalanine to tyrosine. Now, when this enzyme is not available, the tendency would be, the, uh, the tendency would be, there is an excessive, ex uh, 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 ba yan? <laughs> excessive accumulation of phenylalanine. Okay? Again, ulitin natin, uh, when this uh, enzyme is is absent, of course, walang walang mangyayaring conversion ng phenylalanine to uh, tyrosine. Now, when this happen, ang mangyayari, mag-accumulate lang itong phenylalanine na to. Kasi bakit? Hindi naman siya na-convert into its metabolites. Okay? So, ang tendency niyan, mag-accumulate lang yan sa um, um, body fluids including your blood, urine, and etc. Also, uh, as a result of this one, due to this excessive phenylalanine, there would be a presence of increased phenylalanine sa blood. Okay? And uh, increase, an increase in phenylpyruvic acid in the urine. Now, now urinary tests for uh, phenylpyruvic acid are based on the ferric chloride reaction. It is based from the ferric chloride reaction that yields a permanent blue-green color. Now, the, uh, aside from this one, the most well-known blood test for phenylketonuria is the microbial inhibition assay known as your GU3, GU3 test. Now, the principle of this one, the principle of this test is based on the growth of your bacillus subst uh, subtilis organism. It is based from the growth of this organism. Okay, so madali lang to actually, madali lang yung go three test natin. For the procedure, you're just going to uh, put your sample in your disc. Lalagyan mo yan, tapos you place your patient sample, probably, uh, preferably blood sample. And then you place it in your culture media containing your bacillus subtilis. And then, aside from the, um, tawag dito, Tama, yung culture media natin, merong bacillus subtilis yan. Oh, hindi, mali. Your culture media, meron yan inhibitor. Inhibitor yung tinatawag natin, beta-2 thionylalanine. It serves as an inhibitor for the growth of your bacillus subtilis. Okay? Now, after placing your blood impregnated disc, that is the time now you're going to culture your bacillus subtilis. Okay? Now, after incubation... <clears throat> ang principle kasi niyan, if there is an increased phenylalanine, phenylalanine that is present in your blood sample, th this phenylalanine will now counter uh, counteract the action of your beta-2 thionylalanine. Okay? So, parang ganyan. Kung mataas yung phenyl, uh, sorry, your phenylalanine, your phenylalanine sa blood ni patient, ang kulit, okay, if increased phenylalanine are present in the blood, this phenylalanine will now counteract the action of this inhibitor. So, anong mangyayari? Anong mangyayari kung wala ng inhibitor yung organism natin? Makakatubo yung ating bacillus subtilis that is present in your culture media. So, in that, um, in that explanation pa lang, the growth of your bacillus subtilis is considered a positive result for phenylketonuria. 
Okay, the growth of this bacillus subtilis around the disc indicates the presence of an increased level of phenylalanine present in the blood sample. The next we have your tyrosiluria. Okay, the disorders of tyrosine metabolism can either be inherited or metabolic defects. Okay, hereditary disorders of tyrosine metabolism are serious conditions resulting to liver and the renal tubular disease. And these are often very fatal. Okay? Now, while acquired naman, on the other hand, your acquired tyros uh, tyrosiluria, it could be a result of liver, liver disease or underdeveloped liver among the newborn. Okay? Now, the defect in tyrosine metabolism can yield either of its two degradation products, namely your per uh, para hydroxy para hydroxyphenyl pyruvic acid or uh, para phenyl and para hydroxyphenyl lactic acid i think it is in your handout naman now based on the uh, based on the enzymes Affected in your tyrosiluria, hereditary disorders can be can be classified into three types. Okay, so meron tayong type 1, type 2, and type 3. Okay. <clears throat> so your hereditary disorders, okay, could be actually um, classified into three types. We have your type 1, type 2, and your type 3 tyrosiluria. Your type 1 is caused by the deficiency of enzyme, what we call fumaryl acetoacetate hydrolase. Okay? Now, this produces now, your type 1 tyrosiluria produces a generalized renal tubular disorder. Oh, hindi to pala. Renal tubular disorder and uh, progressive liver failure. Okay? Okay, renal tubular disorder and progressive liver failure among infants soon after birth. Okay, so after nilang panganak, usually lumalabas itong mga manifestations na ito. And then we also have your type 2. Your type 2 naman is caused by the lack of the enzyme, what we call tyrosine aminotransferase. Okay, now uh, type 2, <clears throat> type 2 tyrosiluria. Okay, persons with uh, type 2 tyrosiluria may actually develop corneal erosion. Okay, it is associated with corneal er erosion, corneal erosion and lesions, particularly of the palms, the fingers, and the soles of the feet. Now, because of this lesion, it is believed that these lesions are caused by crystallization of the tyrosine in the cells. Okay, then lastly, we have your type 3. Your type 3 naman, okay, it is caused by the lack of enzyme para hydroxyphenyl pyruvic acid. Asa na yun? Sorry. <laughs> Nandito pala yun class. Okay, tyrosine crystals, again, associated with your type 2 tyrosiluria. Okay, then whereas your type 3 naman, it is caused by the lack of enzyme para hydroxyphenyl pyruvic acid dioxygenase. Okay, now this one naman, it can result to mental retardation. Now, urinalysis findings may include the uh, findings of tyrosine crystals. And then, screening tests for tyrosinemia include ferric chloride reaction also. Ferric chloride test yielding now a uh, positive result of transient green color. Okay, transient green color. And aside from ferric chloride test, we can al also make use of nitrosonaftol test. Your nitro Nitro, nitrosonaftol test. Nitrosonaftol test producing a positive result of orange-red color. And then next, we have your alkaptonuria. Alkaptonuria is a rare inborn error of metabolism, okay, characterized by the excretion of homogentisic acid in the urine. Okay, now by the way, the name alkaptonuria was, was derived from the observation of the of the urine from a patient with this condition. 
Kaya tinawag na alkaptonuria. Alkaptonuria kasi yung urine ng mga patient with this kind of uh, metabolic disorder, uh, tendency na nag an tawag dito. Ang tendency niyan class yung kanila mga urine sample after uh, after prolonged standing at room temperature kapag nag-alkalinize yung kanilang urine, uh, tendency it will turn into um to dark brown or something black basta magda-darken yan after prolonged standing kaya tinawag na alkaptonuria okay now your alkaptonuria is mainly due to the lack of enzyme what we call homogentisic acid oxidase which is essential in the catabolism of your phenylalanine pa rin and tyrosine Again, this enzyme is essential to the catabolism or metabolism of your phenylalanine to tyrosine. <coughs> phenylalanine to, uh, or rather, catabolism of phenylalanine and tyrosine. Now, therefore, the absence of this enzyme, your homogentisic acid oxidase, could actually result in the accumulation and excretion of homogentisic acid. Now, in adults, the, uh, the disease may manifest itself as a form of arthritis. Okay? Um, uh, this form of ar arthritis, we call it ochronotic arthritis kasi yung dark pigmentation sa cartilage, we call it your ochronosis caused by this um, condition caused by this metabolite, your homogentisic uh, acid. Napunta tayo sa urinalysis, uh, findings of your alkaptonuria. Again, we said a while ago that the urine which contains homogentisic acid will turn dark if allowed to uh, stand at room temperature. However, take note class that the visible darkening of the urine of patients with alkaptonuria may only occur within 12 to 24 hours. It may only occur within 12 to 24 hours. Now, also, take note that if a, um, tawag dito, if ascorbic acid is present in the urine, lalo na kung sobrang taas ng levels ng ascorbic acid, it will also interfere. It will interfere the darkening process of the urine sample. Now, we have these qualitative procedures that can be used to screen for your homogentisic acid. It, in, it includes your clinic test, your clinic test forming a yellow precipitate. We can, uh, we can also make use of ferric chloride reaction, yielding now a transient deep blue color. Then also, we have your alkali test. Yung alkali test na yan, ito yon. Yung simply, stand mo lang sa room temp yung urine sample. Para mag-darken yung sample natin. And then next, we have your melanuria. Uh, melanuria, as we all know, melanin is a pigment which occurs normally in the skin, in the hair, and even in the eye. Now, a deficiency in melanin production is associated with albinism. Okay? <clears throat> now again, a deficiency in, melan in melanin production is associated with albinism. Now, melanin kasi is derived, it is derived actually from tyrosine. Okay, nanggaling siya kay tyrosine. And take note, it should not be, uh, normally it should not be present in the urine. Okay, your melanin, nanggaling siya kay tyrosine. Ayan. Now, um, this melanin uh, should nor uh, normally should not be present in the urine sample. However, in some patients with metastatic malignant melanoma, they excrete this melanin or it's um, colorless. Uh, uh, tawag dito, yung may mga melanoma patients, they have the tendency to excrete this melanin or its colorless precursor, uh, precursor what we call melanogen. So, dalawa yung pwedeng excrete ng patients natin. We have melanogen or melanin. Now, upon exposure also to air, this melanogen is readily oxidized to melanin. And then, if a urine contains a large amount of this melanin, it will become dark also. It will become dark brown or black after standing for several hours. Now, the screening test, 
the screening test for your melanuria. We can also make use of ferric chloride reaction. Okay, pwede natin gamitin si ferric chloride test. Yielding now a positive result of gray or black precipitate. Aside from ferric chloride test, we can also make use of thormalin, thormalin, sodium nitroproside, thormalin, sodium nitroproside test, resulting now to a red color. And then, pwede rin natin gamitin si Ehrlich's test. Ehrlich's test, thormalin, and sodium nitroproside test, lahat yan, ang positive result is red color.